Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the JF-17 Thunder and we're looking at the cockpit familiarization. So the cockpit we can split into the following groups. We've got the left console here showing with the cursor, left vertical panel there, front dash here obviously dominated by the left, middle, right MFCD and the central UFC up front controller and the hard head up display, right vertical panel, right console. So let's start on the left console. Disclaimer, there is currently no manual for this. There's a kind of a quick guide but it doesn't really give much description so a lot of this we have to work out by just pushing things and trying to figure it out. So starting on left wall in fact, uh, oxygen supply, red left, oxygen supply on, and um, we can turn that and the other way around, oxygen supply off. Next, handle, CSS, canopy severance system, currently non-functional in early access when we're doing this. What we think it should do whoop, is to blow this debt cord for the canopy and allow egress, but currently no way of doing that. We also have a torch here or a floodlight, whatever you want to call it. It does work, it's just not turned on at the moment. Let's move back down to the rear of the console. We have a zero wise cover here and a zero wise button under there so if we were going to fall into enemy hands we can destroy sensitive systems on the aircraft. We think it's all software rather than the hardware but you know you can't be sure. Next a very interesting switch and our best guess here ejection seat activate destruct is that if we are have it turned on to enable and we eject then it will automatically fire the zero wise system we're pretty sure that's what it's going to be disable we can eject without you know zero wising so there you go next we have ph test pito heat test or automatic mode then we have shars on or off shars strap down heading attitude reference system this is something we're going to need to have on turning it on will initiate the alignment system for shars Next, emergency hydraulic or backup hydraulic system on or off. Flare jettison, so if there's a possibility of a fire or an emergency landing or whatever, we'll open this and we'll fire off our flares, all of them. Next is our only non-UFC access to the radio, so our manual radio panel. Master control knob, we can have it off. Transmit receive, transmit receive a monitor guard. ADF, automatic direction finding for radio navigation. Guard only, which I think set to 243 megahertz in this aircraft and set where we can um, uh, do a built-in test or change preset channels squelch switch we've got our uh, volume here currently set to maximum clockwise our handover switch which can change control uh, issue control between the manual panel here and the UFC up front as we'll see and we've got an alpha numeric numpad here for various data entries. Next, FCS, flight control system. Do we have an air-to-air -air loadout or an air-to-ground loadout? Air-to-ground -air -air loadout one or two, so this is without uh, si uh, wing fuel tanks 6G. This is with wing fuel tanks up to plus 5G. We've got flight test, uh, FCS, flight test switch is one and two. We've got a built-in test that we can run for the FCS here. We've got a record button here, not functional as far as we understand. We've got our yaw trim or rudder trim here. Reset button here. We've got here our auto or if you like our standard FCS or if that's problematic we can switch to our emergency flight control system. We've got our standard uh, roll and your uh, CAS switch, so it's an augmentation switch for roll and your, and it will stay on, and that's our basic configuration. If for some reason we want to turn them off, we can have that augmentation off in those two axes. And regards the rear stabs, if we are in an emergency stall situation, for instance, and we, don't, we need direct link to the rear stabs, uh, the F-16 has something like this, or very similar to this, um, to exceed standard angle of attack, then we can turn direct link on in emergency there. Next, down by the seat, we have pressure, pressurization for our G-suit here. O2 supply for our mask here. 
This guy non-functional. This guy non-functional. O2 diluter here for the mask. Uh, diluted or 100% oxygen there. This guy, emergency seat supply. So if we need, you know, we don't have for whatever reason O2 supply in our seat, then we can pull that for that. And we've got an arm switch here for um, to allow the ejector seat to function. Moving on to the engine panel, we have, regards starting, a three condition switch. Can you do that, RC? Yeah, forward uh, is starter cold, so the jet fuel starter dry crank, so it introduces jet fuel. Middle is the start, which is normal, it initiates jet fuel starter cranking sequence, then initiates engine start sequence, and engine cold, which is aft, is engine dry crank, so it, it cranks the engine with no fuel. Roger, and I'd also like you to explain the anti-surge as well, please. So the anti-surge from what we can figure out when a when you have a compressor stall in an air in a jet engine, the RPMs will increase um, to a point where it can damage the engine. So I believe what this does is prevent that RPM increase on a compressor stall. Lovely. Here we have um, engine limit allow afterburner mill power only. This is normal to have a secondary backup control system for the engine in case primary fails, and we have that here. Engine mode, this, as far as we're aware, goes to power output standard. Combat power, it's going to allow extra power but more fuel burn, obviously. And training, we're pretty sure, goes the other way and allows less power and better fuel consumption, less wear and tear on the engine. We have a starter switch here for the engine during the start sequence. We have a starter switch cover and or a cover switch and switch here for an air start. We have a separate tutorial for that. And we have the basic engine control switch here, so we need that on for the engine to function. Onto the throttle quadrant, obviously we've got the throttle lever here. The buttons on it do not work per se, as in you have to, you know, bind them to your your actual HOTAS. Uh, we have a friction lever here that obviously doesn't function for the virtual stick here. We've got throttle emergency button. We have a quote here from the stream. If airspeed greater than Mach 1.35, the afterburner is engaged and interlock will physically block the throttle from going from afterburner zone to the idle mill zone. In this situation, you can bypass the interlock by pushing down the throttle emergency button and throttling down. Throttling down afterburner at fast speed may cause engine surge or an engine flame out. Okay. If we want to move the throttle uh, stick or quadrant from the stop or the detent to idle we've got that here and quite hard to see but behind there throttle cage if we want to move from idle to the stop or to the detent position there and that is our quadrant moving up to fuel panel so we've got the booster pump or pumps here on or off air to air refueling off up is to allow us to fill all tanks internal and external and if we just want to fill the internal tanks, then we can go internal. Fuel valves. We have the ability here to open or close fuel valves. We've got feed here. We've got active here. Now, we can't work out the difference between feed and active in this aircraft. So, you'll have to let us know. But if we need to shut a valve because of a fire or whatever, that's how we're going to do it. Next, trailing edge flaps. Either they're up or they're down. We've got front lights taxi off. Or landing configuration parking brake is on or normal no it's quite braking is normal or parking brake and we have the ability here to test brakes we can have it on or off or warning. test in which case will give us a warning we haven't figured that one out so please let us know if you have any more information on that switch left vertical panel master arm is on off or we're in simulation mode panic button commonly known as an admiral's doorbell or an emergency jettison will jettison select stores in an emergency ground jettison enable literally allows us to release weapons on the ground it's not going to be for us it's going to be for ground crew uh, brightness for these indicator lights here and these indicator lights are for the gear condition currently three down and locked if we test here, we can see our transient light here, gear are in transit. Next here, we have the ability to override the weight on wheels switch. So if we wanted to uh, 
raise our gear even though the weight on wheel sensor was showing i.e. the plane is on the ground or the switch is broken we can put that up like that and raise the gear and I wouldn't suggest doing that next indicator lights for trailing edge flaps drag chute deployed there and speed brake there we've got a movable little floodlight there that's not turned on at the moment and finally backup weapons selector of bombs IR missile gun and main instrument panel or dash on the left here we have our uh, drag chute currently in a neutral position we can deploy it with up and jettison it with down emergency wheel brake here pull turn pull here we have our master warning here that will show for various reasons and we can silence it by pressing it we've got the fire warning here and we've got the flight control system warning here we have the three multi-function color displays, the MF CDs here, here and here. They give us interaction with 95% of the functionality within the aircraft, radars, weapons, navigation, whatever. To control various functions, then we can click on the what we call OSB buttons around here. Each MF CD has symbology brightness here, up and down, contrast here, up and down, and overall brightness here, up and down. Next, UFC, upfront controller. This is the main way that the pilot will interact with the majority of the systems in the aircraft, like IFF systems, uh, data link systems, fuel systems, autopilots, radios, and so on, alphanumeric keypad, and various other options here. Obviously, we have full tutorials on UFC, MFCDs, and everything else, so we won't go over these individual buttons now. Up here, we have the HUD. Heads up display, more or less standard for contemporary fighters, and we have a full video covering all of the symbologies in all of the modes in the JF-17 tutorial section. Auxiliary controls for the HUD, contrast, symbology, brightness, symbology. We have here a fast select button. This is actually to do with the UFC here. If we're trying to manipulate figures like numbers, we can increase and decrease quickly here just for usability if we're going to go to our standby fixed reticle for some reason then we do that there and the UFC light brightness there with the lights illuminated you can see these three better and we've got our advisory panel here RC do you want to go through our options of what we can show in green starting on the top from left to right is pitch trim roll trim and yaw trim light when they're in neutral position uh, you have the next row is air to air uh, mode selected. Oh, I'm sorry, air to air flight control system configuration selected. So that means your your uh, flight control system switch. Um, the next one is A G slash G one. Your air to ground one selected, and the next one is air to ground two selected. The last one on that second line is emergency flight control system is on. Third row is number three tank empty, number one tank empty, wing drop tank empty, and center drop tank empty. And last row, engine start is active, AB is afterburner on, combat mode is combat mode is active, emergency hydraulic pump is on, nose wheel steering is on, and the last one advisory, your shards malfunction is detected. Roger, and because these are green, you can see these are these are advisory, these are not warnings or cautions like these guys over here. Next we can change the pressure setting for the barometric altimeter here. We can just you know, drag it and you can see we're measuring in inches of mercury there. Next is our chronometer. We have brightness of the display up and down. We have our local time there. We have our UTC or Zulu or GMT there. Uh, and we can have a stopwatch as well and have various functions of that. Right vertical panel, oxygen supply pressure times 100 psi, wants to be in the green obviously. Next, pneumatic systems, main and emergency psi times 100. For this warning panel here, we've got day or night mode. We've Morning. also got, oh, hello. We've also got the brightness. It's actually running a test in the background, which is why it's going to come up with various warnings. Um, we've got day and night mode, that's brightness. 
oxygen supply turning knob that we saw on the left will will if it's on we'll have the blinker on here and that shows that it, we are taking oxygen uh, and we have the brightness for that there and we can test this and the other lamps in the uh, in in the cockpit uh, caution panel RC send okay so this is a caution and warning panel it's split into two with warning lights being on the top in red and the caution lights being on the bottom in yellow starting on the top from left to right uh, first one is nothing second one is oxygen tank level is low canopy is not sealed low hydraulic pressure detected second line is air data system malfunction detected uh, low fuel level is detected cabin pressure decrease is detected and engine rpm is reduced third line big which is aircraft flight control system configuration switch error is detected fuel pump mal fuel pump malfunction is detected main ac electrical system malfunction is detected and low oil pressure detected fourth line direct link flight control system mode is selected start pump is dc electric pump malfunction is detected dc generator malfunction is detected and engine starter malfunction last line on the warning lights is flight control system level 3 status malfunction brake malfunction is detected battery malfunction is detected and engine temperature overheat detected so those are your red warning lights mm -hmm. your yellow caution lights uh, starting on the top left to right flight control system level 2 status anti-skid system malfunction transformer rectifier unit malfunction anti-surge valve malfunction next line flight control system level one status nose wheel steering malfunction static inverter malfunction anti-icing malfunction third line roll cast augmentation system is off ECS malfunction environmental control system next one is uh Electromagnet, electromechanical management computer malfunction and secondary engine control malfunction. Fourth line is yaw cast augmentation system is off. Uh, equipment overheat detected. Warning light malfunction detected. Engine diagnostic unit failure. Next line, autopilot is off. Pedo heave detect, pedo tube heater malfunction detected, avionics malfunction, and digital electronic engine control malfunction. Last line, emergency flight control system malfunction and ejection seat safety is on. Lovely. I like it how we've got a warning for the warning lights. That's, I've never seen that <laughs> That's before. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kooky plane. I love it also how it's got a... <laughs> if, they're all, if they're malfunctioning, wouldn't they just not come <laughs> on? <laughs> it's very good, very good. Right. right, let's move on. Rights console, top. Electrics, battery on or off. Alternating current, AC generator on or off. And direct current generator on or off. HUD and MFCD, day mode or night mode symbology brightness. Our INS, inertial navigation system, master mode, standby, fast, INS, nav or GC. We think that's gyro compass, but it doesn't say. Uh, this is the brightness for the AAP panel, which is here. And back to the HUD, we can, our rejector knob, we can have normal symbology displayed or declutter re where we can reject some of the symbology, it simplifies the symbology. Next we've got the AAP panel which is pretty cool, RC. Alright, so the AAP stands for Avionics Activation Panel. Uh, you have your master mode switches on the right. Combat activates all avionics systems required for air combat. Training activates uh, avionics systems for normal flight. Combat specific avionics are not activated. So starting on the top, and we'll work left to right, ACMI Air Combat Maneuvering Instrumentation, which is your flight data recorder. Next line is your helmet mounted display, which is not available in this aircraft. Uh, Self-protection jammer, convertible laser designator pod, IRST, infrared search and track, not functional on this aircraft. Uh, next line is radar power, 
uh, SD missile link command transmitter optical self protection countermeasures and your radar receiver a uh, radar warning receiver next line is your COM1 radio your COM2 radio your navigation system and your IFF system and last line is your initial inertial navigation system your weapon mission management computer one uh, your next is your weapon mission management computer two and then your SAIU is your standard armament interface unit audio control panel we have two comms com one and comms two and we have their audio volumes here a receiver for our TACAN and ILS uh, beepers for the Morse code uh, we've got the Morse uh, sorry the audio control there missile uh, you know the side one to growl if you like volume there intercom on or off we we'll use that to talk to the ground crew are uh, not modeled but we have uh, the antenna select for the radio we want upper or lower antenna in real life you'd use that to get obviously the best uh, signal uh, also we've got here speaker control box channel antenna switch we're not sh uh, main or standby we're not sure what that does in dcs if anything uh, we think it might be a backup uh, a backup um, amplifier as most planes we found have backup amplifiers it makes sense if it was that but let us know if you know differently next environmental control systems master control knob here manual cold up to automatic manual hot defog the canopy will fog up on this jet <laughs> and we have a very loud defogger sorry for the noise uh, we have our ECS mode selected of normal operation off ram air. Oh, you can hear the sound effects. I've added sound effects. That's cool. Uh, D we think that's D smoke. Um, it doesn't say anywhere, but we think that's D smoke. Next, an interesting switch I've never pulled before, so let's go and do it together. Emergency uh, gear release. I'm gonna, I can do that, and then what I can do is pull that guy there and actually push it down as well. We actually, can. have to rotate it. Oh, do you? Yeah. Do you know how to do that? Oh yeah, yeah, rotate. Yeah, I got it. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. to make sure rotate you rotate will actually drop the gear. Make sure you absolutely don't press that by accident. Okay, very good. Next, we have interior lights. You know, front uh, instrument panel display rheostat on consoles rheostat on and floodlight rheostat on. I love such. I love these green lights. They're so gorgeous. Exterior lighting, uh, very simple and self-explanatory. Position lights, bright, dim, or off. And do you want them steady or do you want them flashing? Formation lights, off. Kind of a rheostat, uh, up to brightness level four. Anti, uh, these, do you want anti-collision lights? Do you want them off or do you want them tow lights, which is suitable for towing on ground? Uh, your master control for external lights, normal lights. Do you want to have them off or do you want them to have a, have a night vision goggle friendly? Add a refueling lights on or off and a rheostat for the brightness of said lights and the anti-collision code so you can have your lights flashing a certain code for identification for flights there different codes DTC data transfer cartridge if we want to transfer weapons nav or any type of information to the cockpit which we will have to do we can plug a little cartridge in there and we can inject the cartridge there uh, we've got a removable light here. Next, we have our canopy condition lever here. Four conditions open, stop, close, close and seal. Also, seal our canopy here for pressurization, obviously. Uh, we have another floodlight here, and it's modeled now, obviously, because I've turned the lights on. We have a manual canopy crank here. We think that's because, in, in case of failure of the electric motor, we have seat up and down and we have safety pin for the ejection handle here and that Mr. RC uh, oh we missed one vital thing our A2C compass magnetic compass there and of course mirrors on the ABO anything you think we've forgotten RC yeah I think we've hit it all that's it. It's a really simple and easy to use cockpit once you get used to it compared with a lot of planes. The only weird thing is, of course, you've got no steam gauges in the front. Literally everything is dependent on these MFCDs, which is obviously the way it's done. Nowadays, I hope you enjoyed that and see you later.